Let's take a look at SolidWorks simulation. And the example we're going to look at here is these two beams that support this uh, air conditioner here on the center of it. Uh, I'm going to show you three different study types. And we're going to start with a basic uh, static study, which is just basically a, a strength test. And then we'll move on to some more complicated um, vibration studies and a pretty simple uh, harmonic study to understand the, the frequency modes or the resonant frequencies of this structure. All right, so with that being said, let's get started. Now, SolidWorks simulation is just an add-in here. So I have this ribbon at the top. I have the button here for a new study. I'll click that, and this is where I choose all of the um, options here for what type of study I want to do. I have a general simulation option here and I can do static or a modal analysis. Some other more complicated design insight mm -hmm. studies to help get me some insight into how my design process is working where I can remove some materials and some optimization. Thermal studies, buckling fatigue, and then some more um, complicated vibration studies like linear dynamic, which we will get to in a minute here. But first, we'll do a static study, and I'm just going to give it a name, call it strength test. Hit OK. And just like Microsoft Excel, I have all these tabs on the bottom of my screen here listing all of the different studies that I've done, and I can... Um, and click from one to the other, copy setup information from one to another, right? So it's pretty, pretty straightforward an interface that we should be familiar with. Um, you know, for your SOLIDWORKS users, all the information for the simulation study is listed on the left hand side of the screen over here. This is uh, a workflow that we're pretty similar to, uh, pretty f familiar with using when it comes to using SOLIDWORKS, right? So we have all the information here on the left, the model in the graphics area in the center. The ribbon up at the top, this triangle, that's a workflow that we're very used to using when it comes to SOLIDWORKS, right? So to set up a simulation, it's pretty straightforward. We just basically start at the top and then we work our way down. So we have parts, connections, fixtures, loads, mesh, and then our results. So in the parts folder, this lists all of the components that we are simulating. This is step one. We tell it what it's made out of, how we're going to mesh it, whether it's going to be solid shells or beams, and the materials um, and any other information that we might want to use with the um, bodies or the parts themselves, right? So for this example, I can do something like this. I can exclude from analysis. I can suppress this from my study. I can apply a material. So we'll just do a generic alloy steel. This is my SOLIDWORKS material library here, right? So I have a check mark, meaning I can move on to the next spot. Connections, this is how components interact with one another in this study. I have things like bonded, no penetration, allowed penetration. This is something that we're familiar with if you're familiar with any other FEA packages, right? So we'll just go with bonded here, meaning everything is connected. Uh, anything that's touching is connected, but because we removed this AC box here, it's not really applicable here. So we can skip that step. Number two, fixtures. This is how it's held in place. So for this study, you know, you can do something like I'm going to fix this back face here. Okay. And you could also fix this face here on this side, but I think a better option is to do something like this. So I will suppress that. I'll come in here and I don't want to make this overly rigid. So I could come in here and do just these edges, right? Depends on how you want to work, right? You can pretend you have welds up here, right? This is how it would be welded to the rest of the frame. And then you'll notice it's kind of tough to click all these little tiny edges. So, you know, you have that freedom, that flexibility to pick a face or an edge or a point, right? Just you'll figure out what works for you and you can go from there. 
So now I have my fixtures, it's held in place on either end. And now I have my external loads. This is step number four, right? Working our way down, starting at the top, moving on down through our list. So external loads, I'm gonna apply a force. I have two options here. This is in pounds, either 60 pounds total, right? So I can do this, this, and this, and it's 60 pounds total, evenly distributed, or 15 per item. So this is 15 per, uh, per each one of these items. No difference there in terms of the setup. It's just different ways to help you get the job done. All right, lastly, we have our mesh. This is where we come in here and build our mesh model. We can make it finer, coarser. We can go in and start to adjust these parameters, use different algorithms for how we look at the geometry. Or we can keep it really simple, not even look at any of these things, and just say mesh. And I'm going to run it here directly after meshing it. So this is my results. Obviously, this is being exaggerated and overly deformed. I can look at my displacement and it looks like it's, you know, pretty, pretty small here. Um, you can come in and change any of these options here. So I'll edit the definition. I say I want it to be at true scale. I want to know PSI and I want to make sure it's floating. So that now I can see it in terms of PSI. Here's my displacement. Millimeters in scientific notations, not really useful to me. But with it being exaggerated like this, maybe I'll animate it to see what's going on here. Great. Can edit this definition as well. Change it to inches, true scale. And you know what? As you start to do these things more and more, you'll find different default options. Those could all be set as default options here. All right, so now that I have this done, I can see that it actually looks like it's definitely been designed strong enough to support the weight. One of my favorite plots to look at here is a factor of safety plot. And I can find the minimum factor of safety you know, we're well above one. You know, we have definitely over designed this to structurally withstand the requirements. But let's take a look at some other things like the resonant frequencies. Okay, so I'll switch over here to a frequency study. And you'll notice I have a very similar setup, although I've added the um, AC unit and added the bonded contact in there because that helps keep it rigid, okay? So I ran this study and I can look at my resonant frequencies. This is telling me at 7.4 Hertz, I have mode shape one. At 16 Hertz, more or less, I have resonant frequency mode shape number two, and so on. Animating these is great gives great insight into the mode shape. So I can see this is predominantly in the Z direction going up. Take a look at mode shape two at 16 Hertz, always animating these plots to see. This is going up and down here in the Y. And then here's mode shape three at 24 Hertz. So these are just the structural frequency modes of my model based on the structure of it, the shape of it, the stiffness of it, right? I can right click on this and I can see the mass participation, making sure that I have enough of the mass participating in either direction, X, Y, and Z, that it's a valid result. I can list my resonant frequencies here. You know, I listed a bunch of them. Okay, 15.
All right, so that's the modal analysis. And now I'll switch over here to the vibration study, okay? This is the study that will give me the stresses and displacements based on a certain frequency, right? So I'll show you the properties of this study. I have the harmonic options here, and I'm going to say, okay, my lower limit and upper limit is between 10 and 20 hertz. That's the operating range of this structure. It's very important to know the operating conditions, right? So that's what's going on around it. I have some modal damping applied to it. Okay, I have modal damping applied at a damping ratio of 0.02. And then everything else was exactly the same. I can look at my stresses here. This is going to be the stresses based on a particular frequency. So keep that in mind. Okay, as I step through this, you'll notice the results are changing because it's based on the frequency here. Okay. How about the displacement? Okay, how much is displacing at a certain excitation frequency? You can also look at these response graphs. So I have response graph one and response graph two. This is showing you the amplitude and this one is gonna show you the displacement. So came up on my other screen there. Here is the entire frequency range from 10 to 20 Hertz. And this is the displacement in the Y direction. Here I have the acceleration. So those are very easy to, to create. I just right click on the results and I look for the option here to define a response graph. And I have a location picked right here in the center, right? I set this up as a predefined spot right in the center there. So at predefined location, you can do any node or all of them. You could pick them from a screen, right? I like picking right in the center there and here, x-axis is going to list frequency and the y-axis I can list stress displacement velocity or acceleration right so acceleration I can change it to G's okay and then this gives me that result here that's how I was able to find that and as you get more complicated with understanding the vibrations and the, the accelerations or the displacements um, of your models you can always save this out into Excel and start to analyze the data in a tool that's more analytical like Excel instead of a, a graphical tool like SolidWorks here listing the, the, the data in graphs and showing you plots, right? So that is SolidWorks simulation talking about the harm harmonic um, vibration module. We talked about the strength test and um, looked at the, the modal resonant frequencies.